show about sports by people who love sports. Welcome to Sports Isolated. Here's your host, Callum Duck. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sports Isolated. Joining me on the show today is Port Adelaide Football Club Young Gun, Xavier Dersma. Ders, how are you, mate? Good, thank you, bro. <laughs> Good, thanks, mate. I'm uh, excited to be on. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, obviously, we, uh, I got the privilege to meet you when I was working at the club and uh, we got to do regional day together when we went out to uh, Ramco and, uh, and Wakery, which was obviously a great experience um, to be, I suppose, up and close with, up and close with the players. So um, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show and um, it means a lot. So, Durs, do you mind telling us um, what it's like coming from a country town with only a thousand people, so you're from Foster, and then obviously getting picked up by Port and having to move into state. Yeah, so obviously, as you just said, my, my town is, is Foster. It's in the um, South Gippsland region of Victoria, so right down the very, very bottom of Australia. Um, I have come from a small town. I've, I've grown up here since I was uh, very little. Um, I have, yeah, there's about a thousand people here in Foster. And for me to, to get drafted to Port Adelaide, it was a bit of a whirlwind kind of a kind of a week. I like the whole draft leading up to the draft. I didn't know where I was going to be going, uh, and then I was lucky enough to get my name called out on the night, and I was actually there at the at the draft um, at the draft night, uh, and I was able to just go up and uh, see the few other boys that got drafted as well, so Connor and Zach, uh, and then you know, just that just a whole whirlwind from there. So it was a pretty amazing thing. I was I was very lucky to be, to be drafted as well. Um, but like just the whole, the whole kind of aspect of the community of, of all of Foster is now behind me as well, and so there's been a lot of people um, that now go for Port Adelaide um, just because just because of me, and it's uh, you know I feel pretty privileged and pretty lucky to, to be able to represent my town, and I do it you know as best I can. But I'm um, yeah I'm very proud proud man for for my uh, hometown, so I'm always going to come back here, and uh, yeah I love it. So it's pretty amazing to be to be able to have that kind of voice. Yeah, um, does for people who don't know, um, obviously you had to move into state. So how does the club help you um, help, obviously, young footballers who get drafted um, make the transition? Um, I understand that you're living with a the host family at the moment when you're in Adelaide. Yeah, yep. so so what happens is initially when we when we get drafted, we stay together. All the draftees stay together in a um, in a like a house for for a week. So all eight of us uh, who got drafted all stayed there together. And then from there, we went out to our host families. And so my host family um, was with uh, Rod Campbell. And he's a firefighter at the Metropolitan Fire Service in Adelaide. And I got to live with him and Sam Hayes for the first year. And it was host families basically that, like, obviously it's a pretty tough change for people coming into state, especially to live in Adelaide. Um, so, you know, they're only 18 years old and they're trying to, you know, train and, get the best out of themselves it's obviously pretty hard to look after yourselves as well so obviously a host family helps you along the way and they help cook and clean um keep you you know making things a lot easier for you so your first few years in footy um so obviously that's what my guy rod campbell does for me he's a legend uh and takes really good care of us and helps set us up with some great values and um set us up for life uh, in general as well so we get looked after really well. And then obviously this year I've got Dil- Dylan Williams with me now this year. So Sam moved out. Um, now I have Dylan Williams with me. And it's, uh, yeah, very lucky to have someone as good as Rod uh, look after us. We call him Rocket. Um, but yeah, he does a great job. And yeah, can't really, can't really speak much more highly of him. Yeah, speaking of uh, Sam Hayes, he'll be uh, joining us on the show tomorrow. So looking forward to um, yeah. chatting with him. So how, how do you find Adelaide, obviously, to bit bigger city compared to uh, Foster. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's a lot bigger than Foster. Obviously, it's a it's a city, but all, the the place I used to go to a lot was Melbourne because of footy and and life, etc. Used to go there almost every week or every second week. So I've been to Melbourne a lot. Um, and yeah, like in terms of you know, Melbourne's a lot different to Adelaide. Adelaide's a lot smaller, um, much more of a country town kind of cliche vibe, but. Yeah, it's, it, I like it. I think Adelaide's a great city. Uh, and I've, I can definitely see myself being here a long time, hopefully. So, yeah. Yeah, so I definitely think the, uh, the Alberton faithful want you here for a long time. And you've turned, obviously turned into a little bit of a cult figure here, but we're going to talk about that later in the show. Um, 
does do you mind telling us about your junior footy days and obviously how you progressed into the AFL system? Yeah, sure. So I started off just play, uh, playing uh, Oz Kick and then straight into um, I. We didn't really have a local local footy team here in terms of um, juniors, so we had our Foster Tigers. But the high, the lowest age group they had was under 15s, and so you pretty much didn't have any any other option to, to play except under 15s when you're old enough. So uh, originally, I went to uh, Melbourne. So mum and dad uh, drove me out to Melbourne uh, every every second week or so to play uh, for my cousin's team, so East Ringwood. So I played in, in Melbourne, East Ringwood, on, on a Sunday morning um, for my first, I think, under, under eights and under nines, oh no, under nines and under tens. Um, and so I played, I played yeah, as, as a bottom ager in, in those ones and um, I started off there. Then uh, my dad and another guy, local guy in the town, uh, decided to make a local footy team called the Corner Inlet Stingrays. So basically that was like the first junior club that we actually could get to play as, um, and, you know, and, and enter the competition. We were pretty good. We won, I think, out of the first, out of the four years I played there from under 11s to under 13s, uh, we, we won three out of the four grand finals that we made. So we, we were a pretty good team. There were some good local, uh, good local guys come in. Um, and, you know, I think we had Sam Flanders, who's now drafted the Gold Coast, who's from Fish Creek. So he played there. I played many years with Sam. Uh, and we had some other really good players as well that um, didn't play, didn't make AFL, but we're also, you know, really good state league and, and um, under-18s players with Gippsland Power. So, like Matthew McGannon, uh, Brock Cripps, uh, who else we got? Brett Thorson. There's probably a few other names in there. Oh, Tyler Watts, who played for um, Bendi- uh, not Bendigo, uh, Ballarat. So, there's a quite a few uh, really good, you know, players in there in that team that were lucky enough to to play all together. And we um, were a pretty good side. And, you know, they went on to play some pretty high-level footy as well um, and then yeah obviously went from there played for Foster Tigers um, all the way up until uh, uh, seniors I played seniors when I was about 16 but all along those times so under 12s 15s 16s and 18s I played I was lucky enough to play for Victoria and Victoria Country so I um, mean under 12s 15s and then 16s 18s I was in big uh, country so uh, yeah it was it was I was very lucky to be in there um, you know and growing up in Foster you know and playing Gippsland Power as well in under 15s all the way to 18s um, you know, that was kind of my pathway. You know, a lot of travel being in country Victoria. So travel for me now is, is like nothing. It's, it, it basically doesn't exist. Any time I have to travel, it doesn't mean anything to me because I've done it so much as a, as a kid growing up. It's become second nature to me. So travel's basically nothing. But that's kind of my path all the way through to being, you know, drafted by Port Adelaide. Yeah, that's obviously... Um... Really cool to hear your backstories and, you know, everyone's got a, a different, I suppose, story and pathway about how they, they got into the system. Um, does you got picked up um, at the draft at pick 18. Obviously, you were drafted with Connor at pick five and Zach at pick 12. Um, do you guys find any extra pressure being a first-round draft pick? Uh, I think there's always the initial... I think there's always the initial pressure on yourself. It's more on yourself and more on the fans. The people in the club don't really have too much extra pressure on you because once you get in the club, no one cares where you got picked. You just, they just want to see you work hard um, and do your best and, you know, and, and they earn the respect of the playing group. They don't really care where you get drafted as long as you work hard um, and, you know, and, and show them that you're capable of being there. But, yeah, no, there's not really too much pressure. I didn't really feel it myself. I, I knew that I, when I came in there, I had to, you know, I, wanted, I had high goals of myself, high expectations of myself anyway, regardless of where I got drafted, at what pick, etc. I wanted to play round one and I wanted to play pretty much every game my first year and, that, you know, it didn't matter that I was pick 18 or whatever. I still want to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, obviously, um, yourself, Connor and Zach all had great first years. I think you played 20 or 21 of the 22 games last year and yeah, um, twenty. Zach was something similar, and then obviously Connor was an absolute standout in his first year, and did obviously very yeah. well for himself in the Rising Star. Um, all three of you made your debut in round one um, at the MCG against Melbourne. Obviously, really good win for the the club. Um, can you talk us through your debut and I suppose the emotions that you had leading up to it, and obviously what it was like, you know, getting your first touch, your first goal, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so that whole 
again, much like my draft night, that whole first day was, was a lot of a blur. Um, I remember the parts of the game, but I don't remember all of it. Uh, I, I remember getting my first touch. I hit a target, but it was a bit of a wobbly kick and it only just got to Boki, I think. And then he, I ran past again to get a one-two and I stuffed it up. I ran straight into another player. I slipped over. So that was my first touch or two. I think I got a handball away, but it turned over. So that were my two first touches. I, I kind of remember my first goal after it, the excitement just took over. I don't really remember too much about it, but uh, it was pretty, just the whole kind of day was, was an amazing thing. I had lots of people there coming to, um, coming to watch me. And I, th- I don't know exactly, but I think there was over 100 people came up to watch me. So it was pretty amazing, all from, you know, Foster and the surrounding community and family and friends, etc. So I was very, very lucky to have that many people come to watch. And, um, you know, it was just a massive, amazing day, really. Yeah. Durs, we've got to talk about your famous goal celebration, your, your bow and arrow. Um, obviously, everyone at the club loves it. Um, did cop cop a bit of stick with some from some opposition um but can you talk us through that goal celebration and i suppose how you came up with it i know you're you're massively into your basketball and i believe that's where it sort of came from yeah yeah so just it had an nba inspiration from jamal murray um reggie jackson they they kind of do it and so i kind of just went from there i really like you know the way they do it the way they got some lots of swagger around them so yeah i decided why not do something different and uh, I did it myself, and yeah, I didn't really give it too much thought. Uh, you know, I actually, no, I, I didn't give it, now I don't really give it too much thought, but originally I was like, well, should I pull it out, should I not? But re- then I just decided that, you know, why not be different and do it, so, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, um, you know, when we get back out playing footy, uh, well, hope, hopefully you can pull uh, a couple of those out. Um, Durs, do you think AFL... Hopefully, yeah. Do you think AFL will resume this year? And if so, how do you prepare for, um, I suppose, a quick resumption to the season, potentially? Yeah, so I, re- I, think, I think AFL will return this year in short. Uh, I think originally I was... My, my own personal you know, estimation was I think we should... or well, I think it will return in about July. Uh, it looks as if it's going to head that direction. I think it'll be pretty close. I think it'll be heading around July. I still don't know what the format will be, et cetera, of the hubs or whatever we're going to be doing. But I think it'll be around about July. It'll be my original my estimation. I think that's probably what it'll be around about now as well. So, I don't know. In terms of preparing for it, but we just have to do what we've been given. So, we've been given a program of running um, and gym. So we try and tick that off. You know, we have that three times a week and then you have to do all your extras and stuff as well. So that can include, you know, kicking hands, saving the ball, you know, touching the ball, et cetera. So try and do that as much as you can. There's not really hips you can do. Some, you know, you're in isolation, so we can't really have massive team meetings. We have to do team meetings online to try and keep in touch with all the boys and the coaches and, you know, what whatnot. But it is still pretty difficult, obviously. But, you know, there's people worse off than what we are. So, you know. We just have to do with what we can, you know, what we got. Yeah, obviously, it's uh, I suppose everyone's in a bit of um, limbo at the moment. Obviously, there's been people who have been working at the club that have been stood down and they're sort of in a bit of limbo about when they can potentially return to their job. And obviously, being a footballer is uh, no different. So, does do you mind telling us about um, what you do outside of football in your spare time? I know. Uh, from talking to you previously off camera that you love your, your outdoor environment? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So one of, one of my massive passions is, yeah, obviously outdoors. I like going hiking. I like going on walks. I love um, sort of native animals and stuff as well. So for me, that's, that's what I like to go and try and do when I can in my spare time and in off-season, et cetera. I'd want to hike myself um, and go around looking at um, pretty awesome beaches and hikes and stuff. So I try and do that when I can go for bike rides, et cetera, as well. Um, but, you know, other in spare time, especially in this time, you know, there's not heaps we can do as we're quite limited. So PS4 has become, you know, a little bit of a little bit of a mainstay. Uh, but also, you know, I'll, do, I'll be doing uni. I haven't, I've deferred it for the minute just because we're in a, you know, reasonably tough time. But I will be doing uni, uh, doing sport rec as well, sport rec and PE. Um, but, yeah, I, I enjoy, you know, just trying to enjoy my mates as well. Um, I don't at the minute we're not getting heaps of time with them obviously but uh, the boys that I do you know 
grew up with and then also have become really great mates with here at Port Adelaide. You know, I'd like to spend time with them when I can as well. So, yeah. Um, so, Durs, what are your plans for the future, obviously both on and off the field? Yeah, so as I just spoke to you about, the uh, uni will hopefully become either a, a PE or a sport teacher, um, but also want to have some kind of role to do with, with, uh, with the media. So hopefully, not really sure at the minute, but you know, if you build yourself a profile enough, you can get you know, a good media job and you know, doing commentating or you know, special comments, etc. Um, but also other jobs as well. Would not, I'm not really sure about which ones I'd like to do yet, but there's obviously reporting jobs that are pretty, you know, pretty high profile and exciting. And I think that's something I'd like to do as well. But um, yeah, I'll just enjoy, enjoy it while I can, um, enjoy footy while I can. And then I'll try and do some, knock some uni off as well when I can as well to try and build myself a career after footy. Yeah, obviously on the field, do you see yourself um, playing in that wing position for a majority of your career? Um, I'd, I'd like to see myself eventually go into it as a, as a full-time mid uh, or mid forward, etc., or whatever, you know, whatever role that they'll create, you know, many mids go forward these days. And um, I think, I, you know, I would able to hit the scoreboard so I could see myself being a, a predominantly a mid, but rest forward. Uh, but yeah, at the minute, my, you know, we have some really great mid at the minute and uh, my body isn't, isn't as big as, as, as those guys at the minute. And, you know, I'm quite comfortable at the minute with my role in the wing and I, I know, understand my job, what I have to bring each week and what I need to do. And I'm quite happy being at the wing at the minute. Um, you know, hopefully, though, event, you know, eventually I'd like to become, you know, an inside mid, or, you know, a full-time midfielder, you know, that, that, like the boys, you know, like Boki, et cetera, that are playing there every week. Uh, I think, that, you know, that's what I'd like to become. Eventually, but as of right now, I'm very happy, you know, getting my role in the wing and, you know, because I understand what I have to do each week. So I'm quite happy at the minute. Des, thank you so much for your time and joining us on uh, Sports Isolated. I obviously wish you all the best for the ra- remainder of the year and hopefully uh, you can get back out in the park sooner rather than later. Too easy, Dunks. Thanks very much for having me on and uh, good luck. Stay safe for the rest of the isolation. <laughs> For those of you who are watching at home, thank you very much for tuning in to Sports Isolated. Please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.